In this film, I'm simply going to be talking about what tools and equipment that I use when I come to do some flush setting. My name's Andrew Berry, and welcome to At The Bench's YouTube channel. We're carrying on now with our flush setting films. In the last film, I'll link it up just by here. Or is it by here? It's by here. You want to go and click it first, check it out, and then come back. So first of all, what equipment do we need to flush set? Well, I always say it's always so important, if you can, to get the right size stone for the right size burr, or the right size burr for the right size stone. If you haven't got either and the stone's too big for the burrs that you've got, go and buy some more burrs. If there is no burr available in the size stone that you've got, well, we're just gonna have to improvise a little bit and I'll come on to that in another film. So the best, well, let me just start off first of all with what I've got on my bench here, just to show you what we're gonna be using today. We've got, obviously, we need to make a hole. Not a hole, but we need to make a mark on the piece of metal first of all. So first of all, we're going to be using a scribe simply to make a dot, a little indentation in the surface of the metal. Don't need a scribe. You could use a little graver or the end of a, uh, a countersink, counterpunch, something like that. I want to make a little dip in the metal. For then, we can come along then and drill. Now, here I've got a 0.9 millimeter drill. I got one and a half millimeter drill. So why do I use two different size drills to start off with? Well, say you have a plate and you have to drill, say a few holes and they all have to be even. If you drill a hole of virtually the right size for the stone in where you put the mark from your scribe or your center punch or your graver and the hole isn't quite right you've had it because you drilled a hole virtually the right size if that hole is a little bit towards the one hole there's not an awful lot you can do about it so what i would always suggest is it's not so bad because i've only got a little plate that i'm actually working on here but if you have to have a layout and you have to have a line or a square and you have to set stones into that shape Always mark it out accurately, preferably with a pair of dividers so you can get the spacing exactly right. Then start off with a small drill. Drill with a small drill. Then, if then you look and go, actually that hole is just a little bit, it may even be a quarter of a millimeter away from the next hole that I've just drilled and the spacing isn't quite right. Well, then you would then use your slightly larger drill. And as you drill, you would sort of pull the drill to one side or to the other side, whichever it is, to make sure that those holes then are nice and accurate. So it's always a bit safer to use the small drill. If they're perfect first time, you haven't got to worry. You can carry on then with a the larger drill and just go straight down. If there's two holes that are just a little bit too close together, when you drill the one hole, you can always just drill it and pull the drill away from the hole. And that then will make the hole that little bit further away so your spacing will be exactly right. So there we go. That is why I use two drills. Or you don't necessarily have to use another drill. You could then come along with a burr and do the same thing with the burr and put the burr into place and pull the burr to one side to get the spacings exactly even. I like to try and use a drill because I don't want to chance it. I want to make sure those holes are absolutely perfect before then I get the burrs into place. But you can use a burr to pull that hole. Okay, so those are the drills. Then in my case here, I'm going to be using a ball burr. This is I think about a three millimeter was it? I can't remember what it was now. Let's have a look. Yeah, this is a three millimeter ball burr. So once you drilled the hole, if you're say drilling a one, uh, sorry, if you're setting for argument's sake, a two millimeter stone, try and start off with a small drill, perhaps 0.9 of a millimeter, 0.7 of a millimeter, make the hole small, get the spacings right, go up to perhaps a one millimeter or 1.2 millimeter, hole and then 
to set a two millimeter stone, then you would perhaps have a one and a half millimeter ball burr or a bud burr. I use these two burrs because the cut, the teeth in them are quite wide. They're quite aggressive. If you just simply drilled your one millimeter hole and you have to set, again, for argument's sake, say a two millimeter stone, you would get your setting burr and that would look something like this. As you can see, it's straight sided, it's conical, but the teeth are fine. It's a fine, fine cut. You don't expect this fine toothed burr to remove a lot of metal. You will burn out the burr, you will wear the burr out because you're having to remove a lot of metal. Especially in this case, I've got a one and a half millimeter drill. If I then try to use my setting burr to try and make the seat for a five millimeter stone, I'm never going to do it. The burr will just simply wear out. So you always try and remove as much metal as you possibly can with an aggressive burr because it will, it's a lot, lot easier. You can work faster. It'll remove more metal, but perhaps the cut or the surface won't be nice and fine and perfect like it would be is if you used a nice fine burr. So, I would then always use quite an aggressive burr. If we're looking at a two millimeter stone, I would then use perhaps a one and a half millimeter ball burr or one and a half millimeter bud burr to remove the metal quickly. Then I would move on then to a setting burr of the right size, knowing that that burr doesn't have to remove a lot of metal. It'll then cut a nice little shallow seat for the stone to sit on. You'll prolong the life of your burrs. So in my case here, I've got this five millimeter stone. It is pretty big stone. So I've got a ball burr of a three millimeter. I've also got a bud burr. I think that's about three and a half, four millimeter. And then I have my setting burr of five millimeter. So you get the general gist of the idea. That is why we use the burrs. You don't have to use a ball burr. You can go straight to a bud burr. It's entirely up to you, but make sure that it's an aggressive cut and you're removing the majority of the metal before you come to a nice fine burr and that will cut a gorgeous, gorgeous seat. Do we need to drill all the way through? Not necessarily. When you come to set diamonds, a diamond will sparkle. If you put the diamonds on your hand or on a black sheet, the diamond will still sparkle. It does not rely on any light coming up from underneath. And the majority of cases with the diamonds, if it's correctly cut, the sparkle comes from the light coming down into the stone, refracting around the facets and then coming right back at you. So that really gives the stone sparkle. When it comes to this type of flush setting with a colored stone, you, it is debatable. All the flush sets obviously are gonna be covered in. Um, if you're wearing it as a ring, there's no light gonna be coming in from the, from the underneath of the stone. If it's gonna be a, a brooch, there's no light coming in from the back of it. Okay, if it's a cluster, that sort of thing, solitaire, there will be light, but you don't necessarily flush a stone in that type of setting. So you, you don't have to drill all the way through if you don't want to. If your metal is thick enough, you could just simply go down as far as you need to. It, the stone does not rely on light coming up from underneath to give it the shine. So it's entirely up to you whether you just leave the drill hole or whether you use the aggressive cut, the ball burr or the bud burr to go all the way through. It's entirely up to you, whichever you prefer. So that's what we've got. The actual burrs to measure the stone, measure the burrs, I use something like this here. This is what I call a leverage gauge, as you can see. I have got this and I've had this for nearly 30 years and it's basically a gauge for measuring the diameter and the depth of diamonds. But you can buy these in just a normal millimeter dial gauge. These are absolutely brilliant. Either that or something like a slide vernier gauge like this one here. And I love these types of measuring devices. I don't go by what the burr says. Uh, what does this say on this one here? Let me have a look here. This says uh, 3.5 millimeter. I, I wouldn't trust it. I always want to measure it. 
If someone says, Andrew, you've got a three and a half millimeter stone, I'll go, great, I'm gonna order a three and a half millimeter burr. I don't, I measure the stone. I measure the burr and make sure that those two measurements tally up. So what I would be inclined to do with something like this, like a leverage gauge, what I would do is get my stone, or even if I was doing it with a, a slide rule, electronic slide rule like this, I would get my stone, I would simply put my stone in place down here. It reads off on the dial uh, 4.9 4 millimeters, it's supposed to be a five millimeter stone. So you can see one tenth of a millimeter. Then I would get my setting burr, my straight sided setting burr. I would get that and I would then put that in the gap. And if it goes in the gap and it's a nice, nice, close fit, which actually this is, I know now that this burr is exactly the same size as my stone. If I put that burr into place and I can move the burr back and forth, I know that the burr is too small for the stone. And likewise, if this actually won't fit in the gap where my stone is, I know the burr is too big for the stone. So I don't really have to rely upon a measurement. I just simply go by it's like a practicality reason and put that in, see if that goes in. And that is actually, it's a very, 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 very slight bit of movement, but that's fine. So I know now that that stone and that burr are nicely matched. I'd always have some extra stones in front of you as well. This is a five millimeter stone. So this is the right size. So my burr goes in and you can hear, it's a bit loose. So I know that if I use this burr, there is a chance that that stone is not gonna sit down into the seat. So perhaps what I would have to do is just wiggle it around a little bit just to enlarge that hole, a fraction, a tenth of a millimeter to get a nice tight fit. You can also use a burr that is like a tenth of a millimeter smaller and then get a 90 degree setting burr you know the ones i don't have one here actually that have a nice sort of 90 degree edge to it and then cut a groove inside the hole so the stone can almost click into place and that's great if you're using stones that are quite strong like diamonds and sapphires that sort of thing that can withstand the force of being pushed in but you don't want to do that if you have a stone that is quite fragile, like a topaz or a citrine, or I can't even think at the moment, but a nice fragile stone like that, because there's a chance you're gonna crack it. So I always, always aim for a nice, close, tight fitting stone into the hole. And that's why I've got a variety of stones in front of me here, because perhaps as you saw in the previous film, that the, the actual burr was starting to chatter. It was moving back and forth. And so it produced a slightly larger hole that I actually wanted. And that's why the stone was a fraction loose, so, so slightly loose when it went into the hole. And I had a bit more of a job then to burnish the metal over. So the idea is grab yourself what is supposed to be say a five millimeter stone or three millimeter stone, but grab a few of them because they're gonna be slightly different. And also perhaps the way they've been cut in the depth, perhaps the depth is gonna be completely off as well. So it depends upon the stone, depends upon the bearing that you've actually uh, cut. So those are the measuring devices. Then I would come along then to a little mini burnisher. Now, um, I'm not quite sure whether I've made a film. I'll Link it up by here if I have. I'm sure I have made a little film on how we make up these little mini burnishes here. And if I haven't, and I'm doing this and it seems a bit stupid and I haven't done a film, I will make sure I've got a film. And I'll link it down below and I'll do that again. So this is, all this is, is a burr, an old worn out burr that I've simply tapered the point on to a nice, nice, not a sharp, not a very stabby, nasty, dangerous point, but a nice, nice, very fine tip. I've polished it, I've buffed it, I've polished it. It's nice and shiny, nice and smooth. And I've actually got it into one of these handles here, and this is one of my beading tool handles. Or you can tap it into a graver handle like this, and you've got a nice permanent mini burnisher. And that is what I would use then, just to run around the edge of the hole to burnish that metal down. If you're using very soft stones, yes, there is a chance that the tip may scratch the stone. 
So I wouldn't go really, really hard and push down onto the stone. All I'm trying to do is just push down onto the metal to burnish the edge of that metal, just onto the very, very slight edge of the stone, just to hold it in place. So that's what I would use. Make it up yourself, or I'll leave a link, uh, what should I leave a link to? Of course, I'll leave a link by here to go to andrewberry.co.uk where we do sell the little mini burnishes if you don't want to make one yourself. So go along there, it's in the description down below if you want to go and buy one for yourself. So those are the tools that I would use to actually set. There's a couple more tools that we haven't really talked about. One is a flex shaft, like this one here. It doesn't matter whether it's a quick release hand piece or it's one with a Jacob's chuck with a bit. It's in the chuck, it's entirely up to you. It doesn't matter. A foot control will be absolutely fantastic because you can regulate the speed. A Dremel, Dremel's fine providing you can adjust the speed. Sometimes the Dremels just go far, far too fast and they will wear out the birds because they will overheat. So what I always tend to do is have some what's called cut lube or some burr life. I got some burr life here that I have to fasten upon my peg, a little bit of burr life here, and that can go on my bench peg. Always run the drills or always run the burrs through some of this because this really does help lubricate the blade. It helps remove the filings from the teeth themselves so that you can ensure a nice cut. Helps to lubricate the blade, helps to keep the blade, help the burr, helps to keep the burr nice and cool. Don't try and run the burr too fast and this is just simply heat up and burn off and then you'll damage your burr. So I always like to use a bit of cut lube or a little bit of burr life on that. Um, holding devices, with me I've got one of these fixtures here from GRS. Uh, I'll put the link down below. This fits into your Benchmate system and this can be taken out and you can put the normal sort of ring jaws and ring holding devices in place. I love this because this simply goes into place and it works just like the little mini GRS ball. You have the chuck key, it'll go in and you can then take that, whatever you're working on. It's got these little pins as well that will come out. These are the brass ones. There's a pair of steel pins as well. You can put them in place to hold basically whatever you've got. If it's a flat plate, if it's a ring, well then you can always take this out and get something like this, which is a small little graver ball. And with this, you can put the ring shank in here and rest the bezel upon the top. You can then have to have a little base for it that comes with it but then you're going to have to either work oops Daisy you're going to have to work on top of your bench like this which is no problems at all with that or if you want to put it near you you can get a little shelf that fastens up onto the, the dovetail system here and that's absolutely gorgeous as well and if you haven't got that then I would get yourself a little bit of thermo lock or jet set which is a thermo set in plastic. It comes in a jet set, it comes in granular form. Uh, thermo lock, it comes in little gray sticks. I would simply warm that up either in warm water or with a hairdryer or in the microwave just to warm it up because it becomes nice and soft when it's warmed. Fashion that around the piece that you um, want to set and then you can put that into your ring clamp and squeeze it into the ring clamp or into your uh, bench mate or into the little graver ball and when that then plastic cools down it hardens and holds that piece in place um, and that's really about all the tools I think we are really going to need um, I'd always recommend a good quality burr I always use uh, Bursch burrs I always find that they're an industry standard. I'm sure there are other manufacturers out there that um, you may use, but I've had no problem with Bursch at all. I find that the, the quality is fantastic. The variety of burrs, the variety of sizes is absolutely brilliant, and I've had no problems at all with them. Um, I think that's basically then about it. All the equipment that we're going to be using uh, to set our little garnet in our next film, and I'll be talking all about why I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm sorry I haven't done an awful lot in this film, but it is important for you to know what equipment I'm using and why I'm using this equipment. So you know exactly what is going on. Well, Andrew, why are you using two drills? Andrew, well, why are you doing that? Why don't you just go straight to that? So now you know what I use to do flush setting.
Okay, so if you want to subscribe and you haven't done so already, and smash that little bell icon on the end there to be notified when films. Can I go back now? Good. To be notified when films go live on our YouTube channel. Uh, yeah, I'd love you to. Please also give this film a thumbs up if you like it. And I do apologize for the length. It's been over 20 minutes of me talking, and I do apologize. We haven't really done anything. So, Apologies for that. Give this film a thumbs up. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, share it with your friends if it's something that you want to. Um, and that's basically about it. So I apologize for me talking, but don't worry, in the next film, we're going to be looking at doing some actual flush setting and showing you and telling you why I'm doing what I'm doing. But in the meantime, my name's Andrew Berry for At The Benches YouTube channel. Take care. I will see you next time. Bye bye.